How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Vora Motors. I'm AJ Hart, here again with another tutorial. Today, we're going to be going over the display that comes with the eMove Touring and eMove Cruiser scooters. They both use the same little tiny display and there's a lot of functions that come with it. There's five different modes, there's nine different settings within the P menu. Yes, they're called the P settings and I had to look my boss in the eyes and tell him, hey, can you help me with my P menu? So I do expect all of the comments to be able to handle this with some maturity too. It can seem a little bit daunting considering that there's only two buttons on it. But don't you worry, I'm here to help walk you through them all. Now the first thing that we've got to do is turn it on. So you're just going to turn the key. Now on the cruiser you're going to see the battery voltage on this little display. It's going to be a little bit more accurate than the reading that we can get on the basic display. But you're not going to have this on the Turing. So next you're going to come up to the actual menu display and you're just going to hold the power button. Now first things first, let's talk about what you're going to see on the display when you turn it on. On the top is going to be the speedometer, on the bottom left is going to be your mileage, and the bottom right is going to be the time for this trip. Both of which will reset every time you turn the scooter off and on. You'll notice this big one in the center right here, that's the speed mode. That generally just controls how fast the scooter's going to get. One is set for the lowest. Now if you want to change this, all you're going to have to do is press power once, and then press mode. And mode is going to help you cycle through them. One is the slowest, two is sort of a medium, and three would be the fastest. Once you've decided, just press power and you'll lock into it. Now if you just press the mode button, you'll start to cycle through the different modes that we have for the display. We have five of them, so we're just going to run through them really quick. The first setting we have our speed and trip time, both of which will reset every time you turn the vehicle off. We have the trip odometer, which is just the trip mileage for this time. This one will reset every time you turn the vehicle on and off. We have the total odometer. Now this one does stay with you since you've gotten the vehicle and won't reset every time you turn the vehicle on and off. We have the voltage left for the vehicle. Keep in mind that if you're on the cruiser, you still have the little display on the bottom underneath this display which will give a more accurate reading. But this is the reading that you're probably gonna wanna go off of if you're on the Turing. And lastly, we have our charger port, um, because on the back of this, you can actually plug in a USB and start charging your phone. Keep in mind that if your phone is plugged in, you may lose the visual on your display, but your phone will keep charging. Now that's all of the basic modes and settings, but with the cruiser and Turing, we have another set of menus, which are titled the P menu settings. Now in order to access those, you're going to hold down the power and the mode button at the same time. You're going to see this P0. Now the P settings, there are 10 in total. There's 0 up through 9. If you leave the menus alone for about 6 seconds, it'll automatically turn off and go back to your normal display. There it is. And every time you want to get back into the settings, you're going to have to press and hold power and mode again to get back to the P menu. In order to cycle through those, you're just going to press the mode button. Pressing the power button will select it so that you can start accessing and changing what these settings do. So I'm going to go ahead and run down what each of these are. Now P0 is going to be the wheel size. You'll notice that if I press power and start going into it, I can press mode to increase the number and power to decrease the number. And that's going to be the same on all of these P menu settings. P0 is the wheel size, so we keep the cruiser on an 8 inch wheel, so that's what we're going to put the number to. We're just going to leave it alone, and that's going to set the setting. P1 is the low voltage protection. Essentially, this is so that your battery stays at a nice healthy amount of wattage. I'm using the cruiser, which has a 52 volt battery, so I want to set the wattage on the menu to 4300. Now, I'm gonna have to pretend that there isn't a decimal there, and so are you. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave a chart on the screen right now so you guys can kinda see what the wattage for your vehicle should be. Keep in mind that there isn't a decimal point on the actual voltage protection, but there is going to be a decimal point 
decimal point on the wattage. So just kind of ignore the decimal point and put in the correct numbers. P2 is the minimum wattage. We just go ahead and leave that as a 15 and we recommend that you do too. Now P3 is your speedometer setting. It should be locked at one without the ability to change that. So just make sure that that's what it's at and we're gonna move on. P4 changes the vehicle from reading in kilometers or miles. You'll notice that if I press to go to one, it goes to miles and if I go up to zero, it goes to kilometers. And you can just set that to whichever one you want. Now P5 is where we start getting into our safety settings. P5 controls whether or not you are set to kick start or throttle start. Now what that basically means is whether or not you can just start accelerating from nothing or if you need to start kicking your scooter and get a little bit of momentum before you can have some throttle to it. Now one means kick start and so you're not going to be able to just start hitting the gas and go, you're going to need to kick it first. Setting it to zero will allow you to use the throttle start, which means that from the from nothing, you can just hit the gas and start going. P6 is the deciding factor on whether or not you wanna have the cruise control working on the scooter or not. Our cruise control automatically turns on after about seven seconds of holding the same acceleration. So if you wanna keep that on, go ahead and have that number at one. But if you wanna turn the, it, but if you want to turn the cruise off, go ahead and set that to zero. I like having it because I take long rides, so we're going to leave that there. P7 is for our pickup speed. Uh, essentially, this just is a changing on how fast the accelerator wants to go ahead and start making you move. If you want a good hard acceleration, I would suggest putting it at zero. If you want a nice softer acceleration, leave it at one. I like to have a little bit of a softer acceleration just because I don't like to be kind of jerking about when I get going. So I'm going to leave this at one. P8 is going to be the maximum speed that you can have. This is kind of set for more as a percentage. So if you want to be able to access 100% of the speed that the scooter can get, go ahead and leave that at 100. But if you want to say limit it by about 30%, you can just bring that down to 70 instead. Finally, we have P9. And P9 is going to be the strength of your electric brake. If you want a really hard and powerful electric brake, go ahead and leave that at two. If you want a medium electric brake, put that at one. And if you want to turn the electric brake off, just put that to zero. We're gonna go ahead and leave that at two just to make sure that we have that option to stop if we need it. And that's it. That's kind of all the menu settings and the display settings for the menu on the eMove Cruiser and the eMove Touring. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave a whole write-up of kind of all these settings and how to toggle them off and on in the description. We hope this helps and wish you happy riding. Now last, but certainly not least, it is worth mentioning that if there's a problem within the scooter itself, there are some alert signs that are gonna come up. There's an alert for if there's some brake light trouble, for some motor trouble, for some throttle trouble, and some controller trouble. And when those come up, you're gonna see this alert on your screen. Just shoot us an email to our support email address and we'd love to help you out and see if we can't take a look at it. That's everything that I've really got for you all. Thank you so much for watching and we hope that this video helped you out. If you have any ideas for some tutorials you'd like to see from us in the future, go ahead and leave that as a comment down below. Thank you very much and happy riding.